Hey, this is Matt Winning at winningstrength.com, and today I want to talk about how we can make next year, and this video coming out will be 2022, but top factors to make your next year your best year yet. We have a lot of different things I think that most people are missing either one or a few of these particular points that are going to get you where you want to go in 2022 if you've had issues in the past. So let's get to it. The first big factor that I think we need to sit down and really talk about is you need to learn to avoid unnecessary stressors. Now what does this mean? Well this means that if you have say family members, there are, there are people, and mostly in my past, family members that I had to be basically disassociate with in order for them to not create negative energy. And that's very difficult because you're talking family, right? It's not just friends. But you need to look around, and I think one of the biggest things I ever learned from Charles Poliquin was, you are the sum of the five people you hang out with. And if the five people you hang out with are negative, broke, and not strong, or don't have any goals, guess what? You're probably mirroring some of that yourself. So the point is, is don't be around people that aren't going anywhere, and don't be around people that are constantly stressed out, okay? The next thing that you have to keep intact, and the second point we're gonna make in this video is, Take recovery is as important as your training. I don't know how many times we work with people and it's especially important if you're on online coaching because we usually start analyzing this and figuring out where the weakest links in the armor are, right? But the thing of it is is that most people that train hard, they stay up too late, they don't have their diet correct. You can't be a one trick pony and what I mean is that if you're constantly worrying about your intensity levels on your squat and your percentages and all this and that, but you're not taking into account your sleep quality and depth, and you're also not taking into account when you're eating and how you're doing those types of things, it's not really that advantageous. It's only one particular part. If I could go back in time to when I was 17 and 18, and I don't think I did a lot of things wrong, I would have put a lot more emphasis on my diet. I One of my biggest advantages as a kid and why I was so good so fast was the fact that I loved to sleep. I was always in bed by 8.30, 9 o'clock and I never liked to stay up late even when I was in my early teens. So take your recovery as important as your training. The third major component to being a having your next year your best year is remember to plan. If you don't plan then you absolutely plan to fail. So you need to have goals and make them obtainable goals. You're actually better off having six small goals than one massive goal. Six small goals allows you to make small steps towards that progress, right? I don't know how many people we get on online coaching or ask me on Instagram because they don't read and say, oh, he answers questions on Patreon. I don't answer questions on Instagram or Facebook. But my point is, is that what we find is a lot of these people, they don't even have a plan or even worse, how do I put 100 more pounds on my bench next year? Why don't you worry about putting 10 pounds on your bench six times in one year, and then you're gonna be at 60 or 80 pounds PR, which is a massive jump in one year. So that's gonna lead me down another avenue, which is focus on your weaknesses. What this means is that when you go into train, again, we've had videos where people that come in and work out are still 95% better than half, you know, most of the population. But the next step to that evolution is your training should be focusing on your structural weak points. So if you have quadricep to hamstring ratio weaknesses, which is common in most people, you need to fix that. If your triceps aren't the dominant pressing muscle and it's your, your pecs or your anterior shoulder, you're gonna need to fix that before your grenade your shoulder or tear your pec. The point is, is that these weaknesses are going to eventually be the limiting factors in your training and also the plateaus that you reach and can't break. So you're better off just setting all your training for weaknesses. The next and last thing that I wanted to go over today is remember to ask for help. I did not get as strong as I am without the help of many, many people. Namely, Louis Simmons, Timmy Smith from back in my hometown, Jim Dawson, um, Michael Hearns helped me quite a bit with stuff. Stan Efferding has been a huge influence as well as Flex Wheeler and many others. But the point is, is that I was willing to ask for help. And a lot of times I was already willing and asking for help when I was already a world record holder. So my ego never really got in the way from asking people that I felt had more knowledge than me in certain areas. One of those other people's was Charles Poliquin and unfortunately he's not around anymore. 
But the point is, is that sometimes you need to ask for help, and that's what winningstrength.com is here for. We are here to help you with online coaching, train heroic, whatever your budget can adjust to. We're here to help you as much as we possibly can. So go on winningstrength.com and let's see how we can help you make this next year your best year.